here and uh, I'm going to go over how to connect your controller to a PC, specifically a Windows PC. Sorry Mac people, I don't have a Mac. <laughs> okay, first controller, I have four of them. Of course, PlayStation 4 controller. You think Final Fantasy 14, you think PlayStation 4, right? I mean, I wouldn't use it because I have my preference, but uh, yeah, this is a pretty common one, right? To do this, there are two ways. Bluetooth or cable. Cable, grab your cable. You should have one with you. Put it up. Goes in the back. Down. Then, search for controller. Right here. Now you can see my controller has been found. Nothing difficult so far. You can go to properties and hopefully everything should light up when you press things. All good. Now, Bluetooth. Connect. Hold share and the PlayStation button together. This will light up. Please choose. Me. It says wireless controller, that's fine. Connect. If you took too long, just press it again. Once it's connected, the light should be always on. It's kind of hard to see because it's so bright, but uh, this is lit up. It's blue. And now, controller's back. Still working. Great. So that's the PS4 controller. Next up. Yeah, I'm going to connect all four first. <laughs> Switch Pro. My personal favorite for Final Fantasy XIV. You still have two choices, but this one comes with a caveat, which is that uh, depending on the next steps, you may be forced to use your cable or forced to use Bluetooth. Or you may have a choice. It really depends which version of how you do things comes after it. That's what's annoying about the controller, but once you know what you're doing, it's easy. You just have to pick the path. Unplug this in. Ideally, you want this in a USB 3 if you're charging, or a USB 2 if you're actually planning on using it wired while you're not charging. Uh, you can still do it with USB 3, that it could have some potential side effects. So I'm gonna put it into a USB 2. And it recognizes the controller, which is great. But nothing works. Yeah, it doesn't work. There are ways to make it work. Um, that involves using software that allows it to work while wired, and I will cover that later. But for the purpose of this demonstration, which is just a direct connection, the wire doesn't work. There are some Switch Pro controllers where it all works, but it seems to depend on when it was manufactured. But uh, a lot of them, if you're going to go for a direct connection, or semi-direct connection, you're gonna have to go Bluetooth. No choice. So, Bluetooth. Get something sharp, not too sharp, just sharp enough. There is a tiny thing over here. I know you can't see it, but it's there. Press, pull. There should be some lights. Bluetooth. 
to a controller. I will connect. It might still do this. That doesn't mean it's still searching. That's just an error. Where it sometimes keeps doing that for the whole time. Literally. Um, but I haven't had any issues with it. It might actually stop. It might not. It really depends. That one's connected. Now if I go to Pro Controller Properties and over, you should see things lighting up. Yay! Next up, Xbox controllers. I have an Xbox 360 controller. It is a wireless controller. And the thing about the Xbox 360 controllers is that even if they are wireless, you cannot just plug them in through a cable to connect them. You can do that to charge them, but not to connect them. You need to get a wire controller if you're just doing that. This is different for people using Xbox One controllers where you actually can just put in your cable and it'll be fine. You can still do the wireless adapter method and you can also do Bluetooth. Very similar to what I just did on the Switch Pro Controller. This is a wireless controller. Its battery is completely shot dead, and so I have to keep it charged at all times. So I will have to wire it, but that will not be enough to make it work. It's lit up, we're charging, but even if I press this, the computer's not going to recognize it. Nope. It's saying I have no idea what to do. get one of these, wireless adapter. So, once you get your adapter, your controller, adapter should light up. It's really hard to see because I've got too much lighting going on in there. But there is light right here. And there's a button here. Also very difficult to see. I apologize. Oh, I'll get these now. Yeah, let's see this. Press here. While this is on, and hopefully it will connect, you can see it's now in the control list. If I open that in properties, things are being recognized. Last one, an older control. So what by that I mean if you're using something from GameCube era, PS2 era, PS1 era, anything that has essentially non-standard cables and no Bluetooth, you're going to need an adapter. You're going to have to go to Amazon or eBay or wherever, I don't care, get yourself an adapter. So this is my adapter. I'm going to run out of USB slots. <laughs> I did not think it through what happens if I try to connect all of these. Thankfully two of them are on Bluetooth or else I will completely be out. For some reason it's recognizing it twice. I'm not sure this may have to do because actually no I do know because this can support two controllers. Uh, so once I hook it up one of these will work the other one won't. It's fine. Beautiful GameCube controller. I go to properties on the first one. Should recognize it. Button's being pressed. Now, if your controller at this point has been hooked up and is not being fully recognized, if it's at least on the list, it needs to be on the list, but it's doing that thing like what I had with the Switch Pro controller, where when it was wired, it wasn't recognizing it. It's still possible you might be able to use it with Final Fantasy XIV if you end up going through the Steam route that I will show you later. And if that one works, then great. Otherwise, well, you got some troubleshooting to do. But I, I'm just saying, if it doesn't seem to fully work right now, it's not a big deal. There are calibrations 
but calibrations will not help you with not being recognized. What those are for, calibrate right here, is for your recognition of axes and trigger sensitivities. So if later on you find that it's not quite sensitive enough, and uh, depending on which method you're using to actually connect to the game, you might have to come back here and calibrate. Just keep that in mind. I'm not going to go with that right now because you might not need to, at least not right now. So, now that you've got your controller hooked up, or in my case, controllers, what comes next? And that's where you've got choices. So, you've got your controller connected, you need to actually start using your Final Fantasy XIV. What are your choices? The first one, the easiest one, is plug and play, right? You just open up the game, see if it works. For some of these controllers that I have with me, it will, and for some of them, it won't. The ones that have plug and play are the Xbox controllers, and the PS4 controller actually does have plug and play, it just means your touchpad will not work. Doing that, it makes it very easy, but it also means you can't customize as much. You can only use whatever customizations are available within the game and not any other customizations you might want. So you might still want to consider other ways of playing with those controllers, but if you just want to get up and go, they have it. The Switch Pro will not have plug and play, and I will show you what happens if you try to use it, and neither will the older controllers, more than likely it won't, or if it does, it won't work properly. Beyond the plug and play attempts, um, you can use controller emulation. So, as I mentioned, the game does have capabilities with the Xbox style controllers. So, one popular option is getting X360CE, which allows you to map your controller to an Xbox controller. Uh, this is more so for the controllers that won't work by just directly attempting to make it work. It doesn't have many other uh, mapping options, it's literally just map it to an Xbox 360 controller, so there will be no point in doing that if you are using an Xbox 360 controller, and there will also be no point in doing that if you are using a PS4 controller. This is very much an option for those who are using other controllers that just aren't working right off the bat. The next option is DS4 Windows, which is meant for PlayStation controllers, specifically PlayStation 4 controllers, to be used and actually get some of that extra functionality back, including the touchpad, if you want. The last option is the one I will actually show. Um, I won't show every single option. I'm going to show the plug and play, and I'm going to show Steam. Hold on, I know you're thinking, I don't own the Steam version of Final Fantasy XIV. You don't need that. Okay, I'll show you how to make it so that even if you're not using a Steam version of Final Fantasy XIV, you can still use the Steam Controller API. And that one will allow you to hook up many controllers, including maybe the ones that were not working properly in the uh, controller menu, where it was showing one but not necessarily uh, pressing the correct buttons, or any buttons. So Steam might be able to fix that, and it will allow you some extra configurations. So, let's get through it, let's show what happens when you try to use some of these controllers directly in the game. Okay, first things first, system configuration. Gamepad, make sure enable gamepad is turned on. You have choices here. Those will be the controllers that are hooked up. Here is the wireless controller that's actually my useful controller. As you see, it works very well right off the bat. No big deal. The touch screen won't work even if I mean touchpad, not touch screen, same difference. Even if you've switched it to this, it still won't work. Not when you're using direct connection. Plug and play. Next, Pro Controller. Oh boy. At first it seems to work, right? I'm moving. Look at this. 
That's not working. Nope. That's the wrong button. You're thinking, oh, maybe it's a calibration issue. Which it can be. If uh, you're trying out your controller and everything's not great, what you do is you go to calibration. And you may have to do that even for the PS4 controller as possible, that it might not calibrate properly right away. But pick whichever controller you need to calibrate, you start, you follow the directions. So. So far so good, right? Now in this case, it worked well, but as you can see, dead zones. It's being very, very sensitive. Now you can slightly fix that through sensitivity here, but uh, yeah, it's not gonna help all that much. Loop it all the way, and it's still being a little crazy. It just, it's not very helpful. And so while it will work, and maybe your controller will be a little bit better off, uh, it might not work great. <laughs> and that's when you would need something like X360 CE. And uh, even then, it's possible you may not even get this far. Uh, I know the first time I tried to use the controller through this, it was not working. It was after several Windows updates where I guess they must have improved the drivers a bit that it started even letting me do this. Uh, but you may find yourself unable to actually complete the calibration where even though you have the inputs, it's not letting you use them. But in order to fix those dead zones, you're going to need something else. And so for the Switch controller, I was using X360 CE, but of course you could use Steam for that as well. I finally got it to stop doing that. Alright. D60. Works great. Shouldn't have any issues. The only thing is those controllers are old and you might have dead zones just from them being old and once again you will have to fix that in other ways. Last one. I'm actually surprised to see it here because it shouldn't be. It really shouldn't. Um, it must be remembering some of this configurations I did through Steam, but that's not correct. It shouldn't even be listed. So, I'm gonna try to calibrate, see if I can fix this. And it's not recognizing. I'm pressing. It's not recognizing. Even though it was using it at first. It's still not recognizing. And that's an issue that's going to be common in older controllers, where even though it's recognizing it right now for certain things, not all of them, so for this you absolutely need, like you will need to use software. You can't just get used to sensitivities or anything like that. You're going to need it. So, let's talk software. What you want to do, because I know some of you are definitely thinking, but I don't have the Steam version of NC14. Uh, if you don't, just like I don't, it's fine. All you have to do, which if you do have the Steam version, you don't need to do this, okay? It's just if you don't, if you're using the regular PC version of NC14. Go to games, add a non-Steam game to my library. Stuff load, Final Fantasy 14, add selected programs. Now in your library, 
Final Fantasy XIII. It's there. In order to use the Steam controller, you will need to either open it through Steam or create a, uh, a desktop shortcut where it will have a command to open it through Steam. So you, you might actually end up having two desktop shortcuts, the original one and then the Steam version. It's up to you if you want to remove the original shortcut or if you want to keep both and just rename one so it's easy to see which one's which. But yes, you'll need this. Next, we're going to go into Big Picture Mode. This is not something you'll have to do every time, because once you have uh, things set up, you can actually go here to Manage, Control Configuration. But for the time being, for the first time set up, we're going to go into Big Picture Mode. So, Big Picture Mode is open. You're going to go over here to the gear icon, Controller Settings. If you're using a PlayStation controller, Turn PlayStation support on. Switch controller, put this on. I actually don't recommend using this, um, at least not for Final Fantasy XIV. This will literally swap certain key uh, buttons because of their names, but that doesn't change that uh, it may not be the way you normally play, and that might actually feel very awkward. So it's more ideal for games that are more. I want to say action-based, then, then for something that's going to have... It's just it's not great, I don't like it. <laughs> it's up to you. And then you're going to have detected controllers. Um, you may need to identify them, and if you're using an older controller, you will need to define its layout. And believe me, that can be awful. You're going to have to put in you know, exactly what you're doing to map it to this generic controller. Thankfully, the support for Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox is pretty good. You typically won't have to actually define your layout. You might still need to calibrate, but uh, not too much. Calibration is mostly for dead zones, which you can do individually, and believe me, it's a great feature, and uh, the gyro, which is recognizing movement. I don't know if I'd really want to use it, but hey, it's up to you, it's your game, right? So once you've got your controller identified and uh, calibrated, whatever you need to do, make sure these things are on so you can use them. And you go to your library. It's not recent. It's installed. It's not recent because I just removed it in order to do this demo. Controller options uh, is if you want to have your rumble. And that is one of the things that's really nice with the Switch controller is that X360, X360 CE and the Switch Pro controller don't work very nicely for rumble. It will work for Steam, so that's pretty good. Uh, and uh, whether you want to force it to always use the game setting rather than the global setting, I would recommend always having that on. And then you're going to have controller configs, and as you can see, I have a variety of controller configs. And if that looks daunting, don't worry. It's really not that bad. What you want to do, go to the controller, I mean, I'm using Switch controller because I have multiple controllers, chances are you'll only have the one. Right, so let's say you're going on PlayStation 4. And it's probably going to load a default setting for you, but if it doesn't, you go to Browse, Community, you can pick other peoples. If you want something a bit more generic, you can go to Templates and go for a, a generic uh, gamepad template, and that's fine. That will get you started, it's good enough. We're not going to go deep into customizations. I'm thinking that will be a different video. So for this video, it's just, uh, let me make sure I hide my camera. Right here is browse configs, templates, community, up to you which one you want. These are very much a general purpose. It's not made specifically for Final Fantasy XIV. 
Whereas these were made by the community for Final Fantasy XIV. You can preview them, but you may not fully understand them if you don't know how to well, understand this. Most of it should be pretty obvious, you know, that's saying that this button is going to be the trigger, this button is going to be the bumper, it's going to seem absolutely obvious. The, a lot of them are using the share button for select, whereas if you're a person who came from PS4, the share button is reserved, and the select is actually clicking in to here, so that might feel like a strange change. You could obviously change that yourself if you want. Likewise, go back. If I go to my Switch controller, I'm actually, I have one that I made myself, and I will be sharing it at some point. But if you want to browse, you're probably not going to find too many community templates. To be honest. But you will find the default gamepad template, and that one will work more than enough for at least starting out in the game. 360 controller. Same idea. You can browse config. And this. You do have to do that other step first, which was back in the general settings to uh, the final layout. And uh, chances are you can just, after that, start with the gamepad template. But uh, if the controller is very different, like for example the GameCube controller only has one bumper and only has one center button, you will probably have to do a whole lot of different actions. The reason I would recommend using Steam over using X360CE, even though I've been using very successfully X360CE for a long time, is because with Steam you really can do a lot more than before. And so in the next video I will show how to do things like set up a strafe or how to make a controller like this, you know be able to do the things that it normally wouldn't be able to do by supporting combinations of uh, presses that Final Fantasy XIV doesn't have, such as double tapping your bumpers. Yeah, it's got double tap for triggers, but not for bumpers. These are things you can do in Steam that you can't do in X360C. I do believe you can do those things in DS4 Windows, but I can't say for sure. So, I'm going to load my game through Steam. And the most important thing to see <clears throat> all of these are going to say Xbox. Every single one of these is going to say Xbox. And that's because when Steam loads it, um, that's what it does. At least when it passes it to Final Fantasy XIV, it's passing it as a an Xbox 360 controller, just a their version of it, a different version of it. And so it can be confusing when you have multiple controllers because they all have the same name. But uh, if you just remember the order or play around with them, it's not so bad. I, I would imagine most of you are not going to have four controllers hooked up at the same time. Maybe two. <laughs> First one is... PlayStation 4 controller. Second one is Switch. Third one should be the GameCube properly working. I can move these things. Everything's there. Uh, you know, it's all good. I can move around. And if I go back to Steam. Turn on Xbox for Xbox 360. And that's how you get it to all work through Steam. Okay, next video customizations. I will see you later. Bye bye.